Good morning, everyone. Welcome to NC Service Radio Veteran Radio Hour on WPVM 103.7. Um, this is Jessica Rice with NC Serves Western and Veteran Services of the Carolinas. Uh, we're an organization committed to serving the needs of veteran service members and their families in Western North Carolina. Um, we also like to have the opportunity to bring on community partners that go above and beyond to engage those individuals. Um, we're grateful for WPVM for this opportunity to broadcast the first show the show on the first Thursday of the month um, at 11 a.m. and it encores every Thursday for the rest of the month. Um, you can listen live at 103.7 FM in Asheville or globally on WPVMFM.org or on our apps available on iTunes or Google Play. And we have an exciting show for you guys today. We have brought on Mr. Jake LaRue. He is from Horse Sense of the Carolinas. Um, so we'll discuss a little bit about what he does and um, some of the specific programs that they have for veterans today. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. You want to tell us a little bit about your background and kind of some of the work you did maybe before or where where you came before you came to Asheville? Sure, sure. Um, I'm, I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. I enlisted back in 1988, a uh, Gulf era veteran, served in the Persian Gulf, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, um, had a little pump in and out of Somalia as well. Um, when I got out, I was one of those veterans that had a hard time readjusting to civilian life caused a bunch of messes that sort of thing mm -hmm. and uh over the years i you know went through a variety of different jobs i worked at a shipyard for a long time in south florida i did a little bit of professional sailboat racing but i never stuck with anything for too long and uh i found myself in a lot of trouble in new orleans back in 2012 and decided i need to make some moves to put my life back together i moved out to Asheville. the va charles george va in Asheville is a fantastic facility they really took good care of me and uh, engaging on my whole he healing journey, I got involved in meditation and went to a meditation retreat in Hot Springs. And I met Shannon Knapp, who's the president and executive director of Horse Sense of the Carolinas. And she told me about this program that she had going, starting to work with veterans and starting to promote that a little more and asked me if I'd be interested in seeing what they did out at Horse Sense. I'm not a horse guy. Didn't grow up a horse guy. I've been trail riding a couple of times in the past. Uh, but I was interested, you know, therapy horses. I'm thinking therapy dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. Therapy dogs come out to the college campus on test day. You pet them, you relax, you feel better. So I figure I'm going to go out to this ranch, and I'm going to be in this beautiful environment, and I'm going to brush on some horses and do a little grooming, get some oxytocin kicking around, and all's going to be good. Uh, so I went out and participated in an equine-assisted learning session, and it blew me away that this was this was a thing. There was some science behind it there was some some real uh, real training and effort put into it and i got such an impact out of it and saw the way that other veterans reacted to it i said this is this is what i need to do and that was 2013 and i've been at horse since ever since oh, awesome. I, I joke about i volunteered there and they finally they put me on payroll so i would go home when i was <laughs> off the clock nice so you talk about how you know you thought it was like therapy dogs what kind of things did you do in your first time there that was different for you well the first thing in, and not being a horse person and not knowing much about their uh their you know their behavior and, and and reading their body language the first thing we did was a observation meet and greet what it's called so i just watched a group of horses interact with each other and try to formulate you know an idea of who's who what side of the herd of the pasture they wake up on who's who in the herd and then uh, meet them, you know, and, and what really impacted me with it is, is horses are masters of body language. You know, they evaluate their environment all the time, and they're bottom of the food chain prey animals. So they're looking around to see what's going to kill them and eat them. You know, we're humans. We're the apex predator on this planet. So the energy that I brought into the arena when I went to meet the horses, they really didn't want much to do with me. And, you know, we say horses are more than a mirror because they reflect back what we're given at them mm -hmm. and it, it kind of brought me to an understanding of how I was how I was putting myself out to the rest of the world and what other people were seeing coming from me yeah. and if I wanted to make friends with this prey animal I had to learn how to uh, make some adjustments in my approach and learn some lessons from that about mm -hmm. how I look to the rest of the world it was kind of a it was kind of life-changing you know it changed my impression of every relationship I'd had before mm -hmm. understanding the energy that I brought into it yeah. And then learning how to how to slow that down and not be so much of a Marine in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> I bet that's tough for some of your veterans, and you probably see that pretty pretty often. Uh, quite a bit, and it's, it's still tough for me. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about the organization. So you mentioned Shannon. Any What's the staff 
kind of structure there? Uh, we have, uh, I think right now we have about eight staff. Um, there's Shannon and Richard Knapp, and they are the, uh, the owners and operators of Horse Sense of the Carolinas. Uh, Richard is a natural horsemanship trainer, and he's responsible for um, the care and maintenance of the property of the horses, um, rehabilitating the rescue horses, and teaching the rest of the staff natural horsemanship. And then we have uh, mental health professionals and equine specialists. Mm -hmm. And every session we do is going to have a licensed professional mental health uh, individual. We have uh, Talia, our licensed marriage and family therapist, and Rochelle is an LPCA, and uh, a few other mental health professionals that work with us, and then trained equine specialists. Awesome. And we say it's not equine therapy if it doesn't have a mental health professional, a horse professional, and a horse. Mm -hmm, for sure. And so you talked a little bit about the staff. Where are you guys located? What's the what's the setup out there? We're out in uh, we're out in Madison County. The address says Marshall, but it's not out in the town of Marshall. We're just off of Lester Highway and about you know, a couple miles over the Buncombe County line. Uh, it's a 110 acre ranch. It's actually Horse Sense of the Carolinas is located on Meadows Town Ranch, and uh, you said 110 acres, 24 horses, and three donkeys at the mm -hmm. moment. Awesome! Awesome! And then not just horses. What what other kind of animals do you have out there? Um, there is a, there's about a dozen chickens, a rooster, and one lone guinea hen. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk a little bit. We talked about the staffing. Um, what's your what's your role out there? What's your title? Well, I'm a peer support specialist and an equine specialist, and I also work as the uh, veteran liaison and, and veteran program manager. So uh, I do individual and group sessions with both you know, civilians, veterans, and kids um, as an equine specialist. Uh, make a point of being in contact with with the veterans in our program, making sure that they are staying in contact and doing well. Uh, do a lot of individual group sessions with veterans. Coordinate our veteran programming. Like if we have one of our community partners is looking to bring some people out to see us, then then I'll try to set something up. And, nice. and uh, I go around and do things like this. Yeah. Talk to people about our programming. Plug in with other veteran groups. Talk to veterans about what we can do for them. Mm -hmm. A lot of us aren't big on talk therapy, and you don't right. have to talk to the horses. Right, right. And so Horse Sense, they do, they have veteran and then civilian or just anybody, correct? Yes. Horse Sense of the Carolinas is a, is a full-service mental health provider. You know, we, uh, we work with, not to make light of any mental health issues, but garden variety mental health. Mm -hmm. We just say the office is much bigger and the therapist has four legs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we work with civilians, do Blue Cross, Blue Shield, take cash, check, copay whatever, as, as uh, any other therapist would. But we also um, work with a nonprofit called Heart of Horse Sense. And Heart of Horse Sense specific mission is to um, educate, train, and fund quality and professional equine therapy for at-risk youth, veterans, first responders, victims of sex trafficking, and their significant others, families, and caregivers. Awesome. That's awesome. That's a wide, wide range of individuals. That's amazing. You know, if I could do it for everybody, if we could cover everybody with a nonprofit, or if I could afford to do this for free, I think all of us at staff would. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, let's talk about some of your veteran programs. What are your, what's some things you got working currently? Um, well, we've got, uh, we work quite a bit with the Charles George VA. We see clients through their uh, inpatient um, substance abuse rehabilitation program, military sexual trauma, moral injury groups, psychosocial rehab, trauma resiliency group. We've done some uh, compassion fatigue care for their hospice workers and their chaplain corps. That's cool. And uh, we have this drop-in group on Fridays for any veterans or first responders or anyone that are interested in our program but not sure if equine therapy is going to be their thing. So like this Friday from 10 to noon, if you're a veteran or a first responder and you want to know what's up, you show up at Horse Sense. Uh, no intake, no commitment to a treatment plan or anything like that. And uh, on March 27th, I'm going to start doing that every single Friday. Okay. So that's a great drop-in group for prep veterans that want to find out what we do. Right. We'll um, share that on our Facebook and um, Instagram so you guys will be able to find that again. Um, but you can always call Horse Sense or call our team, um, and anybody be happy to talk to you and get you connected and get you over there on a Friday. Um, NC Serves can be reached at 855-962-8387, 855-962-8387. Um, but Jake can also be reached if you want to give him a call, 828-484-2240, um, 828-484-2240. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit about some of the specialized groups. Um, do you work with individuals TBI and STD or <laughs> <laughs> PTSD? I don't know about the STD yeah, part. Sorry about uh, that, they yeah. may probably, maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, we work. Um, we work primarily with trauma. Just mm-hmm. about everything we do is trauma focused, mm-hmm. uh, and that means TBI, PTSD are are quite commonly occurring. And you know, with TBI, a lot of people with TBI have co-occurring PTSD, mm-hmm. and with both of those, there's a lot of co-occurring substance abuse. So mm-hmm. we see quite a bit of that as well. Um, And we, on an individual basis, we're going to try to adjust our treatment plan specific to the individual's needs. Uh, With TBI, we're going to try to help them find new ways of processing and building new neuropathways to to get Mm -hmm. through their difficulties. Uh, PTSD, the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Most trauma-related injuries are, are a disconnect from from your community, from your relationships, from your society. You have a difficult time functioning in a social context. So what we want to do is help people make those quality connections and develop relationships in a healthy, you know, mutually acceptable way. Mm-hmm. How would someone know if they're a good fit for horse therapy? And I know we mentioned Fall on Fridays where they mm-hmm. could kind of show up and get a taste. What are some other qualities? I mean, if they're scared of horses or some barriers, um, how do you guys kind of work through those? I've had quite a, pe- uh, quite a number of people come out that are afraid of horses, um, and some of them, it's no deal. They're not going to go any further than mm-hmm. the initial meeting, and for other people, we, you know, we really want to help them work through that, um, and there's things you can do just through observation of the horses. You mm-hmm. don't need to be right on top of them, and I've had clients that started out hiding behind the treatment team, mm-hmm. and within eight weeks, they're riding independently, mm-hmm. so a lot of people start out afraid of horses primarily because they're big and they don't know anything about them, mm-hmm. and then through... You know, engaging in them and developing those relationships with a specific horse, usually, you know, that, that connection, you start finding out that they're, uh, you know, there's really not that, they're not that terrifying. That scary, yeah. <laughs> and then, so we talked about the Fridays are about two hours. What's a, let's what a session kind of look like, or what different types of time frames do you have for programs? Well, the fall and Friday, anything could happen on that one. We mm-hmm. kind of, you know, I jokingly say I always make a plan so I can eliminate one possibility <laughs> for what might actually happen. Yeah. So that depends on who shows up. If we have new people, we might do something more group oriented. If I've got a bunch of people coming back that have been around for a while, we might focus more on horsemanship where they kind of have an attachment to a specific horse. Mm-hmm. But we've got a we've got a few other things going for veterans. Um, we uh, are um, licensed and, and certified through EGALA, which is Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association. Uh, and we are also uh, one of their military designated programs. And their military designated programs have received an adaptive sports grant this year from Congress. I think it's our second year. Um, uh, Andy Barr from, from Kentucky, Congressman Andy Barr, he's been a huge, huge supporter of equine therapy and he helped push this through. So the Gala military providers got $600,000 this year to spend on equine therapy for veterans. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're offering individual sessions and group sessions for any veterans that are interested. The individual sessions run about an hour, group sessions an hour to an hour and a half. And then in addition to that, um, Heart of Horse Sensible Scholarship Veterans for mm-hmm. programs. And we also do uh, monthly immersive retreats. Mm-hmm. We have um, three of them already booked solid for women. April, May, and July uh, retreats are all booked solid. We can take six mm-hmm. per retreat. That's all we can house. And those are nine or four days on, on property. Come in Thursday night, stay till Sunday afternoon. I'm um, still taking applications for that for June and August retreats. Haven't decided yet whether they're going to be retreats for male veterans or women veterans. It depends on who logs in, shows up, and applies. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, Definitely opportunity for retreats if anyone's interested. You can get in touch with either um, my staff or Horse Sense, and they'd be happy to get you connected. Um, let's talk a little bit about the facilities out there. I mean, you mentioned um, housing for the retreats. What what other things do you have out there? Well, we um we've got a, a a little ranch house, and there's six beds available for veterans. And it's you come out for the retreats. It's full service. We provide the food, the lodging, everything. Stay on property. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have, uh, like I said, it's 110 acres divided up into several large pastures where the herds roam. But we have a um, we have two covered uh, covered arena, a completely enclosed arena, and an outdoor arena. So we're an all weather facility. Mm-hmm. We do shut down for two weeks between Christmas and, and through New Year's, but other than that, we're open year round. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the weather is not dangerous and there's not ice on the ground, we're going to be open and holding sessions. We'll we'll go inside if it's nasty and outside if it's beautiful. Awesome. 
And then give me a day in the life of a horse sense horse. What's that kind of look like? Uh, day in the life of the horse <laughs> sense horse. Um, their day will usually start about 6.30 in the morning, standing at the gate, waiting to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, in the morning, uh, like the, the herd of boys that we have, there's 11 of them, and they come into the main arena every morning and get their feed bags and you know, get to chill out inside for a bit. And uh, we like our horses to be able to be horses. They're not stable-kept horses. Mm-hmm. So the horses that are on the schedule to see clients, they'll stay inside. The rest of them get to go out in the pasture and be horses. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, you know, usually the, the staff will warm up a horse about a half an hour before a client gets there. And, and most of the stuff we do with clients is on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is some riding, but that's if it's therapeutically indicated, we'll do riding. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, they, uh, they stay in, do their job during the day, meet with their clients, get loved on by the staff Mm -hmm. and at the end of the night they go back out to the pasture get their hay and their dinner and go on about it it's not a bad day i mean i like to eat and hang out too no they're uh they're all rescue horses and Mm -hmm. and i think they've got a really good life they Mm -hmm. they are allowed to choose whether or not they partner with us choose whether or not they work that day Mm -hmm. uh we we figure if it's not good for one in the relationship it's not good for either one in the relationship Mm -hmm. so we we let them have an equal say just like the people awesome that's awesome I was going to ask, what are their qualifications? You said they're rescue horses. Anything else that we should know about? Any kind of trainings or anything that they they go through? Um, well, they get worked with quite a bit. One of uh, with uh, we work entirely with Pirelli Natural Horsemanship at our facility. So the horses play what's called the seven games, which are ways that we use to communicate with the horses. That's cool. Uh, so they get a lot of attention with that. And even then, it's it's about making requests and making connections and then making choice. Um, you, you can get what you want with force fear and intimidation but it doesn't work well for building a healthy relationship Mm -hmm, for sure for sure i think that resonates to veterans as well most definitely awesome we're all we know all about the force fear and intimidation (laughs) side of things yes um let's talk a little bit about um the community engagement you guys have i know you said you partner with the va warrior clan you're working with nc serves and healing farm what are some community things that you guys like to engage in uh, we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of outreach. We like to whenever we have the opportunity take a couple of horses somewhere to meet the public. Mm-hmm. Uh, we often will take them to the VA and you know hang out in the courtyard at the CLC with some of them. Awesome. I, I can neither confirm nor deny that the little miniature donkey bruiser has ever been inside the facility <laughs> itself. Don't know. Mm-hmm. Might have been. I heard a rumor. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Uh, but. Uh, Veteran Healing Farm, we, we've done uh, um, some events with them. Uh, mm-hmm. Most recently, we did a boot camp retreat with them last year where 10 veterans came out and stayed at their facility. I brought several horses out, with several of the staff, and we had just a, an immersive experience. They got to do different activities with the horses and engage and you know, find out more about it. And I would say five of those 10 have gone on to become clients at, Hor- at Horse Sense awesome. since then. Awesome. Um, so if someone's coming out to your to your shop, what should they expect? What should they wear? What should they bring? What's kind of some basics? Well, it is a working farm, mm-hmm. and horses are large. The ground's uneven. Gravity always wins. So, you know, appropriate closed-toed shoes. You can wear shorts, but I, I don't really advise it, if you're gonna, especially if you're going to be riding. Um, yeah, whatever you're comfortable in that's appropriate for going out on a working ranch. Um, you can expect to uh, to be a little bit overwhelmed by how beautiful the property is. Mm-hmm. And uh, we usually start the same way with anybody that comes out and visits. We have them observe horses in, in their environment and then meet them. And you get a lot of feedback from an individual by how they interact with a horse the first time, whether they're aware of their own safety, their own boundaries, aware of the horse's boundaries, mm-hmm. um, whether or not they're a direct approach person or waiting for the horse to come back. Mm -hmm. what their perception of horse body language is. So based on that first meeting, we get to know a lot about you. And from there, we'll develop appropriate treatment plan and move forward. Mm -hmm. What about um, just uh, individuals requiring special modifications? Uh, Do you have wheelchair ramps or um, ways for them to get into the facilities? Uh, Yes, and I'm going to plug Home Depot for a minute because Home Depot has taken great care of us. They've uh, provided us with the the materials and and a lot of the labor to... um, install a wheelchair ramp at our mm-hmm. ranch house, uh, make the bathroom handicap accessible, mm-hmm. put in a roll-in shower, that kind of thing. We do have a, um, a full um, mounting platform with a roll-on mounting platform. So if somebody with a physical disability is going to get on horseback, we have a way of getting them up there. Up there. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, inclusive of everyone. Oh, yes. Um, any kind of referral process that you guys prefer for individuals to come? 
if you have a mental health professional you're seeing already or a therapist and you want to go through a referral process and have them, you know, provide disclosure forms and that with us, that's fine. But mm-hmm. anybody can call. Okay. Anybody can come in. Uh, same for th- with uh, civilians as well as veterans. Um, we do get referrals by therapists from the VA, and we have people that come out with the groups that stick around. Mm-hmm. But it's not required. You can contact us directly yourself, and we'll go through the intake process. Awesome. Any documentation or anything that you guys would like to look at? Um, we haven't really made it a priority to see documentation from veterans. Mm-hmm. We have myself and, and Richard Knapp. He's an Air Force veteran, and we can you know veterans can usually smell a fake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've only had one incident where we were where we were concerned. But now that we're working with that adaptive sports grant, yeah, I want to see a, a, an ID card or a DD-214 to register for that. Awesome. No problem. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, talk about inpatient or residential facilities or individuals in group homes. Is that something that's a possibility? It is. And we've, uh, we've worked with a number of substance abuse inpatients in the, back, in the past, and we work with the VA inpatient uh, substance abuse. And they come out to us. We have done some travel at times to to serve inpatients, but it's best we can we can best serve anybody at Horse Sense. Mm-hmm. We have the facilities; it doesn't change the environment for the horses, so they're in their comfort zone and less likely to be reactive to their environment. So we prefer to do it on site. Mm-hmm. But we've had a number of uh, treatment centers and, and residential homes that have bust people out for for half a day or so. Awesome. Um, Let's talk about a little bit about the retreats, and you said it's four days, correct? Four days. Check in on Thursday afternoon and stay through uh, midday on Sunday. Mm -hmm. What's kind of the schedule look like for that, or what's some activities? Are you with the horses the majority of the time, or what does that kind of look like? Oh, yes, definitely. Nobody comes to a ranch Mm -hmm. to not spend time Mm -hmm. with horses. Mm -hmm. Uh, We invite all the participants to start early and feed the horses with with whoever's feeding that morning, usually Richard, uh, sometimes myself. Mm -hmm. it's a little early for me, I'll so, be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on, we just, uh, we love it, daylight savings time, so we just mm-hmm. bump feeding back to 7.30, so yeah. we're not doing it in the dark, but normally it's quite early, um, so they can participate in that, then breakfast. We'll usually start the morning with some sort of a group activity, mm-hmm. so all the participants uh, work together on some sort of a, um, some sort of a thing with the horses. Mm-hmm. It might be, um, it might be some sort of activity where they're, they're navigating obstacle horses, that sort of thing, or it might be. Uh, relationship logic, just just directly making a connection with one horse and, and ways to go about that. We'll split up and, and allow everybody to have a little bit of uh, individual downtime and also individual therapy time. So they get to go one-on-one with a horse and a treatment team. And uh, we try to do a little bit of what we call rhythmic riding, which mm-hmm. is not your normal get-on-the-horse trail riding, saddle, stirrups, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's done with a bareback pad and just a rope halter, and we ride to music. Mm. And it's really about um, it's about self regulation, you know, bottom up regulation in the brain, helping kind of re- recalibrate that brain body connection, a little bi little lateral and stimulation that's for beginners. And that's for beginners. Ooh. Anybody, okay. uh, we we lead the horse for you initially, mm-hmm. so you can you can hold on to the little handle, you can go hands free, mm-hmm. eyes closed or open, about your comfort level. But it's really about feeling that connection with the horse and. Mm-hmm. Having that, uh, you know, you're moving on several planes at the same time. It's kind of akin to being rocked by your mother when you're a baby. Mm-hmm. And it, in the same way that, you know, EMDR uh, treatment yeah. does it, it, that bilateral stim- bilateral stimulation kind of unlocks those trauma centers of the brain and helps you process. Very nice. Huh. Okay. I'm, in, I'm into so it. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the average day on the retreat. We, we like to do some more interesting, fun activities. Like uh, we work a lot with, you know, horses are rhythmic, patterned behavioral animals. So we'll do drumming with them, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, we've done some craft-related things with the horses as well. Nice. We try to keep most of it engaged in the horses. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's why everybody's there. Yeah. But we're, we also have this uh, beautiful meditation area, a walking labyrinth and a, and a three-season pavilion. So we spend some time there. We'll do a bonfire, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Good. It's really about building building connections both with the horses and with the group of humans that are participating. Yeah, being relaxed. Um, so how many, you said women, How many? about how many women do you normally have in your ladies' groups? Uh, the women's retreats, we are restricted to six mm-hmm. because that's all we can house mm-hmm. at the moment. We'd love to be able to do more, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, funding and space are the two are the two limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like I said, right now I have three women's retreats booked with about twenty five people on a waiting list for each one of them. But I have two more dates that are open. We're looking to book people for, and I've had many more women interested in these retreats this year than than men. Mm-hmm. So, uh, guys, 
you know, if you, if you want to go on a retreat, you got to contact me and I'll get you booked. If not, mm-hmm. we're going to give those other two dates to the women as well. Nice. What's the difference in kind of the demographic of that group, men versus women? Do you see like horses react different or individuals react differently? I, um, I, I think that in general, and I find this to be the professionals in the industry too, uh, in equine assisted therapy, guys are 7% of the industry. Mm-hmm. And I tend to see more women come out to the ranch than men. And, uh, but the guys that come out are really, you, you know, really get affected positively by mm-hmm. it. Um, I think with uh, with a lot of the the research that we do as well, I think we um, we get a little more consistent self reporting from the women mm-hmm. that come out. Uh, the guys tend to come in the door really excited and go out the door even more excited. Mm-hmm. And the women that have come out to the retreats have seemed to be a little more therapeutically focused on on what's going on. Mm-hmm. But you know how we are, you know, guys have that yeah. that don't let it out thing. Right, you know? right. It happens. I think that's part of the benefit of equine therapy. You don't have to start talking about it. Mm-hmm. True. So, yeah, it's totally fine to be completely silent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can do a session completely in silence. The yeah. horse is going to give you feedback anyway. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, so how many horses did you say? And let's talk about like a regular group. Say you have 10 in a group. How many horses do you bring out? How many staff do you have that you bring out? What's that kind of look like? So say I have a group of 10. Um, I, I might have five to eight horses that I would have in an arena at the mm-hmm. time. And with a group of 10, we'd have at least one mental health professional and at least two horse professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would go through, everything starts with that observation and meet and greet period. And, mm-hmm. and we probably split them in half to meet the horses. So mm-hmm. it's not overwhelming. Right. Um, yeah. Then uh, again, based on that, see what happens after a lot of times with a group, we'll find out if there's something the group is specifically working on within their own dynamic. Mm-hmm. Is there, is there a communication issue there? Or they want to focus on teamwork uh, and we'll try to cater an activity to that specific, you know, that specific um, problem area, mm-hmm. maybe how to, how, as a group, navigate an obstacle course with the horse without a lead rope you know mm-hmm. how do you ask the horse to participate with you you know in a group setting what role does the individual play mm-hmm. are you doing the same role in the arena with the horses that you do in the boardroom or in your family or in your community you know or is mm-hmm. there something different about how you're doing it right. different questions to ask yourself right how does this resonate to just everyday life with veterans? Do you see anything that they, any skills or tasks that they do that they kind of, you can tell that they've taken with them? I can. I mean, I can tell that from my own, from my own story as well. Mm-hmm. I know my wife's much happier for my <laughs> efforts in equine therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I said before that if something's not good for, for one uh, individual in the relationship, it's not good for either individual in the relationship. So by working on those communi- communication skills, uh, becoming more patient, less easily frustrated, mm-hmm. learning how to make requests and not demands, mm-hmm. uh, and learning how to accept a no mm-hmm. uh, and work through that. So all of these things that we uh, get introduced to with the horses, we can take that out of the arena and into our personal lives. And one of the beauties of horses is that they're 100% genuine in their feedback. Mm-hmm. No ulterior motives, no deceptions. They don't care who you are, what your job is, what kind of car you drive. They don't care what your mental health diagnosis is. Nobody's going through the DSM-5 and saying this guy or this girl's got this or this or this. Mm -hmm. So they're giving you 100% genuine feedback on who you are in the moment, Mm -hmm. and they forgive you when you get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So one of our veterans said, you know, he's been through all kinds of therapy, but this made sense for him because he can take those tools and techniques that he learns in therapy, practice in the arena, and then find out what really works mm-hmm. and then take that home and, and, and use it in his daily life. That's awesome. Any funny stories or anything that's happened on horse sense that you want to share recently mm. or not recently? Either way. <laughs> <laughs> funny stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, we laugh all the time mm-hmm. uh, from the horses themselves and the stuff that they pull. You can yeah. never, you, there's never a dull moment. Um, any escape artists? We do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've got this little bitty guy. He's the smallest horse on the ranch. His name is Hansel and he is a mini horse mm-hmm. and he thinks he's a 16 hand stallion. Mm-hmm. And I have seen him break out of the pasture and get over to the mares and run the fence, just mm-hmm. run and run and run and, 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 you know, he's, he's just sure he can get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's about three feet tall at the back so uh he's a ladies man oh he is but it's not happening little man you, you, you need a step ladder but he does try yeah um, we've had one play with a rubber chicken that was quite entertaining oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we've got a we've got a few horses that are absolute characters mm-hmm. and then we've got three donkeys that will serenade you mm-hmm. so Very yeah, nice. Very nice. lots of fun 
Yeah. Any other tools or props that you guys use with the horses? I know we talked about like saddle versus bareback and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Anything else interesting? Um, pretty much anything in the arena can be used as a prop. Mm-hmm. We do have like blocks and pipes for small jumps and step overs, hula hoops, plastic tarps, barrels, great big Pilates ball. Mm-hmm. Any of these sort of things can be used as tools or, or as, as obstacles, mm-hmm. cones, um, you know. Horses, with the way they perceive the world, a hula hoop might be that, you know, that acme hole on the ground like mm-hmm. you get in the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner cartoons. Mm-hmm. So they, it could be a bottomless fit, pit to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, blue tarp is a, a brand new thing that doesn't exist in nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, a plastic bag can, can be, you know, it's a killer plastic bag. Mm-hmm. So horses are very reactive to changes in their environment, and we can use pretty much anything for a prop to, uh, you know, to uh, evaluate or accomplish a specific task. That's awesome. And then how does the interaction with your staff and the horses, are there certain individuals that work more with the horses and certain individuals that work more with the individuals actually in the groups or what's that dynamic kind of look like? Well, in a, in a session, the mental health professionals focuses on the client mm-hmm. and the equine specialist focuses on the horses. Mm-hmm. So we have that division in, uh, in our sessions, but our mental health professionals are also horse people. Mm-hmm. So they're aware of safety, behavior, reading body language, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But generally in the session, the, um, the uh, mental health professional is going to direct the questioning to the um, to the client, and the horse professional is going to read the horse's body language. And we're going to talk while the session's going on mm-hmm. and, and communicate about what we're seeing and then try to move forward based on what's best for the client. Mm-hmm. So that relationship with the mental health professional and the client is super important. How do you guys kind of build that relationship, or how often do they work with the same mental health professional? Generally, a client's going to see the same mental health professional for the duration of their treatment plan, be it eight weeks, 12 weeks, two years, Mm -hmm. whatever. You're going to see the same. We prefer to keep you with the same mental health professional, the same equine specialist, and usually it's the same horses. Mm -hmm. And there might be a reason to change horses occasionally, or the client may choose to, but Mm -hmm. usually it's it's the exact same treatment team every time. That's awesome. That's a lot of good... Um, continued care. Just like any other mental health professional, if you were going to see a therapist, you wouldn't want to talk to a different one every time you walked into the office. Right. Anything else that we can learn from horses that you want to mention or anything that horses provide aside from when you actually are in the therapy group? I mean, I know just like visually watching horses can be um, therapeutic to some. Are there other things on the ranch that you could do besides being in the actual group? Uh, besides being in the actual group, some people just come out and sit and enjoy the environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have what's called a sensory trail, and sometimes we're on it with the horses, and sometimes we just walk it ourselves. And it's a beautiful path through the forest, and you can uh, just, the purpose is to engage in the sights, the sounds, mm-hmm. the feel, you know, uh, the smells, and that sort of thing, kind of uh, to center and focus, um, right. self regulation. We also have a beautiful labyrinth, a walking labyrinth. So, that's um, that's got a tradition of, of mindfulness practice behind it, and a lot of times, either with the horses or without the horses, we'll walk the labyrinth with clients. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm going to circle back to kind of the grant and the different programs. So can you describe, like, some of the grants versus the programs that you have and how that funding is utilized in the majority of the way? Okay. Um, we work with, like, as I said, with the GALA Military Designated Services um, and the GALA, again, Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association, they're one of the largest uh, international governing bodies when it comes to equine therapy, certification mm-hmm. governing bodies. And uh, they're all ground-based work. There's no riding. And we use the horses to, uh, at, at times, to be kind of a metaphor for different situations in life. And we'll set up different activities to simulate challenges in life. Uh, we may ask a person, like particularly a veteran, we'll talk about transitioning from active duty life to civilian life Mm -hmm. so they'll build an obstacle that represents their uh, their active duty life and then they'll build an obstacle that represents their civilian life and ask the horse off lead no halter or anything like that to accompany them through through the obstacle and we want to see where's the person's focus is Mm -hmm. it on accomplishing the task because you know military mission accomplishment Mm -hmm. is everything very much would be or is it on the way you go about it so we're going we're gonna to process whether or not the task was a success or a failure. Mm-hmm. We're going to process how they go about doing it. We're going to let them evaluate their self on it, whether they consider this to be a success or a failure, and then what happened along the way, mm-hmm. what worked or didn't work, and what part of your actual life, what part of that transition in your real life does this represent for you? Mm-hmm. For sure. 
And so we talk about transitioning. So veterans, I mean, all veteran statuses, all age groups, what do you kind of see um, in the different groups? Do you see a mix of ages or? I do. I see quite a mix of, ma- of ages from uh, Vietnam era through current. I think the, the most current I have got out last year. Mm-hmm. And we have had World War II veterans out at the ranch before. We've actually had World War II veterans on horseback with oh. staff carrying the oxygen tank mm-hmm. running next to them. Uh, so we see all you know, all ages and demographics of veterans, mostly Army and Marines. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen a few Navy and a few Air Force, but it's mostly been mostly been Army and Marines, and about half of them are combat-related trauma. Mm-hmm. We see a lot of military sexual trauma. That's that's about an epidemic right now. Mm-hmm. I think uh, one in six women report sexual assault. One in a hundred men report sexual assault in the military, and our military sexual trauma groups end up being about 50-50 men and women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, we know big it's problem. Much yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Anything that we've kind of missed or skipped over? Um, I want you to mention your events again in case okay. someone's just joining us. Okay, well, I mentioned I was talking about the Agala thing, and the Agala has a grant process right now, and that's mm-hmm. the Adaptive Sports Grant. So I get to see, like, five individual clients in one group a mm-hmm. uh, uh, quarter out of this and we've been filling those spots mm-hmm. and we're taking clients right now for our for our next quarter which is uh, I believe it's um, April through June okay. uh, so we just finishing up one this month and we'll, we're, we're currently taking clients for the next one uh, and currently putting a group together for that and that's an eight-week program mm-hmm. you know, and you're scholarship for eight or granted for eight weeks through a gala and as I said that's all unmounted work that'll mm-hmm. be the the metaphor related groundwork and if the treatment team thinks that, you know, you could get more benefit from continuing to see horses, then we'll talk to Heart of Horse Sense about granting you a scholarship. And if Heart of Horse Sense gives you a scholarship, that's usually for another 12 weeks, and it is renewable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not going to tell you, oh, sorry, time's up, mm-hmm. out the door, sorry you're still struggling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep you around until, and, until the job's done, until you're ready to go on. Right. Uh, we have... Um, like I said, the Fall and Friday program, I'm doing that this Friday, taking a week off, and then starting March 27th, it's every single Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, and that is for veterans, first responders, and their significant others. I do ask people don't bring children to that one. Since I don't know who's coming and what we're going to be doing, it's just really not an appropriate environment for kids. Veterans that have kids that want to come out and do something with their families, call me. I will schedule something individually for you, no problem at all. Um, we've got the retreats coming up that I spoke about, mm-hmm. and, uh, and yeah, I think that's about where we're we're at with what we're offering at the moment, mm-hmm. and it's um it's quite a bit. Yeah, you have some um, non-veteran like youth programs. You want to talk about those a little bit, or some of the non-veteran specific things going on? We do. We work very actively with the with youth in the community. Um, Asheville Parks and Regu- Recreations brings out uh, brings out kids twice a week. Um, Children First Community and Schools. We just started uh, our program again with them. We've been seeing them for several years. Awesome. And uh, the kids groups come out for, for riding. You know, mm-hmm. we, we do group rhythmic riding to music. And for them, it's a combination of things. It's a real thrill to get out of their environment and get out in the, in mm-hmm. the, the open like that. They get to engage in horses, which most of them don't have any experience with. Right. Uh, and then going back to that riding to music, bilateral stimulation, mm-hmm. they're getting passive self-regulation skills. You know, it, it's helping them without them knowing it. Right. And That's we've right. seen some amazing changes with some of the kids. Mm-hmm. Horse Sense started uh, originally working with the juvenile justice system. Mm. There was a juvenile detention facility out in uh, Black Mountain. It's now a women's facility. But when it was active, they would bring the kids out in buses. And they would come off the bus in shackles and get unshackled and walked into the arena for their sessions, walk back out, put back in shackles, and sent back. And we had a, a big reduction in recidivism rates with the kids we saw. I but the bet. facility closed. Right. So now we're working with uh, Madison County, Buncombe County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, and they're referring clients to us as well. Awesome. And Heart of Horse Sense is covering expenses for all of that work yeah let's talk about heart of horse sense and how that's funded um and then like if donations are accepted or what that looks like oh yes so heart of horse sense is a a non-profit 501c um we've been around since 2014 we do accept private donations we've got some corporate donors we write for grants for anything i'll beg money um Mm -hmm. you know whatever it takes Mm -hmm. and uh and, and we uh try to 
try to serve everybody that comes to us with a need. Mm -hmm. We recently expanded to working with victims of sex trafficking because it's a huge demographic that's not being served. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if we could fund the whole world, we'd we'd offer it to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Um, We're very Mm volunteer-driven. We've got, I think, about 60 volunteers on record right now and probably see at least 10 of them every weekend Mm -hmm. and most of them on any of our big events. Uh, we're doing a volunteer orientation and tour and demonstration this Saturday out at Horse Sense. Starts at 10 o'clock for the orientation and 11 o'clock for the tour and demonstration. Um, our ops manager, Chris Tucker, will be in volunteer coordinator. She'll be doing the orientation and then we'll be doing the demonstration together. Awesome. And if you're interested in volunteering, that's one way to get involved. You got to go through a little bit of a process. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we do background check our volunteers because they're going to be working with kids potentially. Mm-hmm. That sort of thing, but we're very volunteer driven as well. What um, what would a volunteer have to put in? What should they expect hour wise or term well, wise? We ask that you try to show up at least once a month for something that we're doing. Um, not everybody can, and some people the farm labor side of it isn't their thing. So mm-hmm. we use volunteers from everything from stuffing envelopes to social media to emailing, marketing, helping mm-hmm. us with our events. Um, yeah, it's so many things that the volunteers are plugged into. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them come out for the kids' groups, and you know they sidewalk. They kind of support the children that are on horseback. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want, like I said, we go through a little bit of a training process. And every Saturday that volunteers come out, we do service and learning. So it's not all come out and shovel poo and work on the ranch. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of things to do. So they'll spend about an hour and a half doing that, and then an hour and a half with the horses. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just hands-on grooming. Other times it's natural horsemanship. Other times it's like an equine-assisted learning activity. So, yeah, quite a number of things. We Mm -hmm. want to make sure they get both the experience of giving back and the experience of enjoying the horses. Right, for sure. Uh, This just popped into my head, and it's not something we talked about earlier. Have you ever had anyone bring a service animal with them? Yes. How does that that picture look? Well, I can't have a service dog interact with the horses for right. insurance reasons. Right. You know, we never know what's going to happen. But people do bring their service dogs. Mm-hmm. If the weather's good, some will leave them in their car. Others, uh, you know, we've got a covered area nearby the arena where the service dog can stay and mm-hmm. still see its handler. Mm-hmm. As long as the dog is capable of not being stuck to the handler, then then somebody with a service dog can participate. Awesome. Um, we can't accept service dogs overnight for our retreats right now. Right. Um, that's something that may change down the road as well, but mm-hmm. can't do that right now. We're not set up for it. Right. But yeah, service dogs, bring them with. We just got to, as long as they're not going to get too uh, excited by the horses and right. be able to have a little bit of separation from their handler, we'll be yeah. fine probably just a conversation to have beforehand and try some yep. things out definitely. it's yep it's definitely a one-on-one with the individual you know mm-hmm. we're gonna review that with them before they come awesome um anything else you want to mention your groups again the dates of them so that people can get enrolled and we'll give your phone number and everything out again yes um fall and fridays this friday and then march 27th every friday until uh, until after the fall We usually knock it off uh, late October, early November because of weather. Mm -hmm. Um, And then two retreats that we're currently accepting applicants for. One is June 25th and the other one is August 20th. Um, I'm also recruiting applicants for individual sessions through that EGALA grant. And I'm looking for veterans that would be interested in participating in an eight-week long group, working with other veterans. And so you can reach him at 828-484-2240, 828-484-2240. Um, my staff will also have a wealth of information. Um, we'll get them the dates and everything, so they'll be able to relay that to you. Um, but you can reach them at 855-962-8387, 855-962-8387. Anything else, any more honorable mentions or anything you want to throw out there before we wrap it up for the day? Uh, I just want to emphasize that we are we are a real psychotherapy facility. It's it's um, you hear some people they're like, hey, I have a social work degree and a horse, so I'm going to do equine therapy. Mm-hmm. So everything we do is with a, a mental health professional and an equine specialist. We are in a gala facility, military designated. We're all trained in trauma focused equine assisted psychotherapy. We are trained in horse and herd behavior and psychology, Pirelli natural horsemanship, and. Uh, one of the things we love to do is have pro- veterans that come through our program and are really touched by it stick around and help us with the rehabilitation work with our rescue horses. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I want to give a shout-out to all of our staff, to Richard and Shannon Knapp, Chris Tucker, Talia Aguayo, uh, Rochelle Ramsey. Don't forget anyone. <laughs> yeah. 
Avery, Charlotte Surface. Yeah, we've we've got a great crew, and and we uh, we work really well together. And if I forgot anybody, smack me when I see you at the ranch <laughs> later. It'll be fine. He'll he'll make it up to you. That's my promise. Yeah, I want to thank you and uh, and Brandon from uh, Veteran Services for asking me out here today as well. Oh, yeah, thank no. you. It's been a pleasure to have you and everybody. This has been Jake Larue. He's from uh, Horse Sense of the Carolinas. If anybody has any questions or anything, they're welcome to reach out to us on social media. Give us a call. Email us. Um, Jake's number's on there. We'll put that on the social media as well, so you can reach out to him. Uh, we thank everyone for listening to NC Serves Radio, all the veterans, family members, and caregivers out there. Please give us a call if you're needing support. Um, we can be reached at 855-962-8387, 855-962-8387. Um, a few events to remember, we do have the NC Strive Conference. That's an education conference for veterans. Um, it's really geared towards staff and facility at universities and colleges, um, but anyone's more than welcome to come. We'll have vendors set up if you're interested in being a vendor. There's forms for that on our website. Um, but that is April 24th, and uh, it's an all-day event, totally free to the community. Um, so let us know if you're interested in that. We will also have a mental health first aid training. It's an all-day training we're doing in communication with VIA. Um, that will be March 23rd. Um, it's all day, and you do have to register. It's no cost to veterans, um, but call the staff, and they'll get you all the information and signed up for that. That'll be local here in Asheville. Um, the NC Strive Conference is going to be at Southwest Community College, so just a little bit outside of town. Um, but if anybody has anything that they need, uh, give us a call. We're happy to look into it, and uh, everyone have a great day, and we appreciate you.